Hi, it's Suzanne from MoonsongDesigns.com. Thank you for joining me. Today's project is this, and I, oops, <laughs> sorry, knocking the table and everything's falling off. I love this. I'm so pleased with the way this has turned out, and as you can see, it's a Christmas cracker. Uh, it measures about 14 centimetres by hmm, three centimetres. Now the aperture is quite big, so you might not want to use it for a gift, but actually I think these would be look would look lovely stacked up uh, around the house for the Christmas season or on your Christmas tree or perhaps in a wreath or a garland. And they're pretty quick to make. So what you need is, we're going to use stripes for this, you need a piece of paper which is um, six inches by five and a half. And for this, we are going to use our Simply Scored. So, let's put that back in. Now, on the six inch side, you need to score that at an inch, an inch and a half, two inches, four inches, four and a half inches, and five inches. And twizzle it round and you need to score on the short side at one and a quarter inch, two and a half, three and three quarters and then five. Now you may not be able to see the score marks on this, um, well, they're no better there either are they? So. I'm going to fold and burnish and we do need the envelope punch board for this but it's a very quick and easy project to make and I think it's a lot of fun and of course you can make them bigger, smaller and I, I love these stripes, this is the candy cane laying paper again which I seem to be slightly obsessed by at the moment um, but there's just so many beautiful designs and I think stripes are great for Christmas crackers so I'm just folding next score line make sure it's straight you probably don't really need a burnishing tool for this because it's paper um, but so I should really have pressed a little bit harder when I was scoring last score line. Right now you'll see you've got a narrow uh, strip here and you've got a fatter strip here and I'm going to start with at the fat strip end and to get the um, to get these little holes what we're going to do is use the envelope punch board we're going to fold over our first score line and this is with the six inches at the top so fold over the first score line, pop it into your punch board at the one and a half inch mark and just punch it. And then open that out, fold the next one, do the same thing. Oops, I'm losing all my strength. Next one. And the last one. And then we need to flip it over and do the other side. And again at the one and a half inch mark. It's as simple as this. Last one. So we don't need that now. Let's put it somewhere where it's not going to fall off. Now then, you need to do a little bit of a little bit more folding. So I want the stripes on the outside of the cracker, so I'm putting it face down. And I'm 
I've just got myself confused now. My score I'm missing. Oh no, I'm not. Sorry. Um, put it face down. I'm going to burnish that a little bit, I think, because it doesn't quite hold properly. Um, so the innermost score line you're folding in, then you fold out. It was that middle score line I couldn't see. And then you fold in. Then you do the same on the other side. So the innermost score line you're folding in, then you fold the next one. out and then you fold the next one in. So you're left with a shape like that. Open those out and where you have that, na that um, narrow strip you need some adhesive. Um, now that's my fast fuse which I'm still having issues with. I think I'm just going to have to put a refill in. Where have I put my snail? Could use so obviously a snail, um, which I always get upside down, just all the way along like that, and then just hold that, and then we're just going to oops, we're just going to seal the cracker like that, and that, and that, and then you might want to just pop your bone folder inside and just sort of rub it down a little bit so it doesn't hang open. And there is your Christmas cracker. Like that. So now we have Christmas crackers. So as you can see we've got the decoration here. So for this because I've got this is crumb cake and, wisp, and uh, real red so I've got my crumb cake and real red. Um, I've got my Versamark. I've got my um, white heat embossing powder and I need a scrap of paper. Just a second. Oh, that'll do. So we need, for this, we now need a sentiment and I'm using the snowflakes again. So if I can, I'll just, on, with my Versamark, I'm actually going to just move that away for a second because I don't want, it's got creases in it and it might not stamp properly. So just with my Versamark onto the real red, like that. And then I'm going to do all the heat embossing at the same time, so it makes sense to do to do that thing. And then this doesn't fit on the block, this particular block, and I haven't got a middle sized. I need to get another block, I think. But it does fit diagonally, so there you go. Now let's bring this back. Sprinkle with the heat embossing powder. And you know I'm slightly obsessed with heat embossing. Just knock that off and get this back into the tub. There we go. Let's get that out of the way. And my heat tool is Bear with me while I make a bit of a noise. Yep. That 
looks like it's done. Now then, we need two punches for this. We've got the decorative label punch and we've got the snowflake punch. So let's do the snowflakes first. Cut a bit off the bottom. So snowflakes. Uh, just line them up. There we go. They look lovely in the red and white, don't they? And then, we don't need this now, so we need this, and I will show you a trick, because if you can see, I mean obviously the crack roll, let's punch this out first, and I'll show you. I'm putting this, I'm lining this up quite near the top, um, I'm sort of middling it. Oops. Now, if you were to put this on the cracker, it's a bit big. So I've made it smaller. And to do that, let me grab my post-it notes. Post-it notes are invaluable, absolutely invaluable. So post-it note, which I'm going to cut into just a narrow strip. You can actually buy them in these narrow strips. I must invest in some. I'm putting it on one side of the, the punched shape. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to feed it back into the punch um, near the bottom, or depending on which way, obviously which way round you've got the, the punch. And I don't know whether you can see that. You can make a completely different size of what do you call it? I was going to say word window, it's not a word window. Just peel that off. This is out of the way. And you've got, instead of having something that size, you've got a much smaller, and for this, a perfect, I think, sized um, element. Now, I've lost my. Um, lost my dimensionals. Might have to use snail. Oh well, I'm gonna do I can't see my dimensionals at all. I wonder if the cat's not come onto the floor. Okay well we'll use we can use this we can use snail. Um, I did put them on dimensionals on this but uh, needs must. I'll find them as soon as I finish the recording obviously. No dimensionals. I don't suppose I was silly and actually put them away. No. It'll be the cat again. So just a little bit of snail on the back of here and pop it onto the cracker. And there you go. Christmas crackers. Um, and I can see me making a lot more of them for putting on the tree. Uh, simple, quick, and I like them. Okay, thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.